I'm with Tom Peterson, Climate by Design International, I think is what the I stands for now. CDI has had a couple of different uh, definitions over time. And uh, Tom, I guess it's about 30 years, 30 plus years maybe for, for this business in a couple of different forms. But you're in a new spot in Owatonna. Congratulations on a, a, a fantastic looking new building, new structure. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. We're very pleased to be here. As you mentioned, 30 some years. And uh, you mentioned that uh, we have a different name now. Well, we actually started out as Concepts and Designs, CAD, a computer-aided drafting service, which is very unusual. Started in the Oatana Incubator. And then uh, we moved from the Incubator to a building on County Road 45 South. We incorporated as CDI, Concepts and Designs Incorporated, and started manufacturing. And we manufactured a lot of HVAC product. Uh, and then uh, in 2002, we moved to 2100 Park Drive uh, here in Owatonna, so uh, we're able to expand again. Uh, and then in uh, approximately uh, 2004, we decided that we were going to focus on desiccant-based product, which is a, that's a type of a way to dry things. So it's a smaller part of HVAC, but it allowed us to grow. It allowed us to continue to invest in the business, invest here in Owatonna. So we continued to do that. 2016 came along. We changed our name to Climate by Design International, still maintaining CDI because that's who people know us by. But Climate by Design International uh, tells us, number one, we're international and we are shipping in the U.S. and Canada now and some other parts in the world. So we are international, but we're trying to control the climate for the benefit of our customers, whether they, they need a dry environment to make their product or they're actually drying a product but it all has to do with that desiccant-based drying. So it's been, a, it's been a wonderful 33 years and we're ready for the next season. We're so happy to be moving into this 200 and some odd thousand square foot building. It's awesome. Maybe explain a little bit more about that decision. Uh, uh, desiccant, is that the right, uh, that, that's the right word? So what is it that you saw back when to really uh, focus on that aspect of things, as, as you say, kind of a narrower market in the HVAC world? What did you see that made you want to focus on that? Well, we did quite a uh, large project to, to understand what would be the best focus for us because we had come from an area that we had done many 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 things and we had developed some really nice expertise but you can't do it all we had to focus so that we could uh, scale up the things that we were doing so that we could document things so that we could even train on them and so we had to make a choice and, and so we looked at everything we had done and said what are we really good at number one and then the second thing we did is we looked at all of the markets and tried to understand which ones were large, which ones were small, which ones fit us, which ones had easiest access. And so uh, by that, we were able to then uh, put that together in a, in a matrix, if you will. And, and uh, uh, so it was primarily what are we good at, uh, what does the market need, and you know, where's the absences, where, where are the opportunities, where are the competitors falling down, and, and so it was a, a very uh, uh, extensive marketing process that we went through to be able to say, okay, this is the one that's large enough that we can grow, 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 small enough that it's not going to get usurped by some really, really large company, uh, and um, uh, something that we are, are really good at and had proven ourselves at and already had customers for. So we started that process in 2004. Uh, today, 90% of what we're manufacturing does have that desiccant in it. We're still doing some other products as well, but it's primarily the desiccant-based drying. And here at your, your new building, which uh, is out on Bridge Street, uh, Industrial Park area, at this building you are building, manufacturing these um, large HVAC systems then? Yes, yes. Yep, so everything is here now, or will we'll be here as we're still in process of moving, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, we had been in four different buildings across Oatana, and so this one's large enough, we can combine everything. And so uh, uh, the marketing and the sales and the engineering, research and development, everything's gonna be in this one location now. So we're really excited about that. 
When this started out in, I think, 1991, whether a reference to starting literally in your garage or maybe the incubator, what did it look like then, considering it would be a very small setting? What were you doing inside? And I know the business was a little different then, as, as the name change would indicate as well. But what did you literally start out doing? Um, <laughs> that is such a long distance from where we are now that okay. when we originally started, um, we uh, did the drafting, the design okay. in the second story of the incubator office building. And then out in the parking lot, we had a large truck parked. And we would order things uh, from vendors like blowers and things, and they would deliver them to the truck in the parking lot. So the UPS guy or, you know, whoever. And then we'd also drive that truck around Oatana, and we went uh, to Gandhi Company and to Modern Metal, where they were doing our fabrications for us. Okay. So everything was subcontracted. We did the design, the marketing, but everything was subcontracted. Then we drove over to uh, near Mankato, where Minnesota Elevator, uh, they provided their labor, and we produced the product out of their facility. So those very early days was really just, you know, marketing, sales, engineering in a two-story office. It was actually a classroom in the, in the old um, uh, incubator, incubator yeah. Uh, it was before there was a manufacturing incubator. Okay. So anyway, that was the very first few months, uh, you know, very, um, uh, how do you want to say it, unusual way to start a business. Uh, and then uh, six months into it, then we uh, found a building to lease to own. It was 10,000 square feet. And so we started doing our own assembly. And then, you know, moved with all the processes from 91 to 1999. By the time we got to 1999, then we were doing, you know, the bulk of everything that, w that we needed to do. But my point, the 10,000 square feet, um, uh, today, just our test room is 10,000 square feet, just where we're going to test the units before we ship them. So it's, it's several levels of magnitude different than when we first started. And as you can imagine, when you first start, you know, it's all hands on deck and, you know, whatever it takes to uh, build a quality product, which, uh, yeah, it's fun. In those days when you're first starting out, would, did you have any sort of vision for a long-term plan that would include something we're standing in right now? Did you dream this big? Sure. Um, I've been asked that several times. Um, and um, <clears throat> the answer to the question is no, you can't, you can't do that. So back when I was 13 years old, the biggest business I could think of to do at that time would be a small engine repair shop, a couple, three employees. And, and so I knew all along that uh, this is what I was made for. And um, uh, so that path has been very interesting. Uh, and uh, as I moved into my career, I've always been in that area of heating and ventilating, air conditioning, manufacturing. And I really enjoy manufacturing. There's just something about starting with an idea, starting with a piece of paper, uh, something that, that someone needs, and, and you can create a solution that never existed before. I mean, it starts with paper, you know, we uh, buy metal, we buy this, we buy that, and then out the back door ships something that never existed before that's going to do some good things for people. So that's really exciting. It to have the to have the faith in that both yourself and maybe family and 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 support that you had along the way uh what can you say to that knowing that i'm sure there were a few bumps in the road and some challenges but what about having having the faith having support where did that come for you yeah faith in my opinion is the opposite of fear now some might say that fear is really having faith in the wrong things <laughs> but uh, i prefer to think that uh Faith is the opposite of fear. And so um, over the years as an entrepreneur and um, uh, knowing other entrepreneurs, uh, the question does come up from time to time. How do you, how do you, or when do you get over the fear? And for me, for us, it was from day one. We didn't experience that because we exercised our faith. 
uh, faith in that the United States and you know the markets are large enough, we will find something we can do. So it's so faith in that, faith in what God created us to do and the talents that he's given us that now we can use those and then in the people that are around us the community that helps us there's just there are uh, so many things and and for me uh, also the way that I practice my Christianity is by practicing faith and and so I believe that uh, uh, as we go from one level of faith and accomplish it we can go to another or saying it another way uh, you'll come up to tests in your life. If you pass the test, you get to move on. If you don't pass the test, you'll circle back around and take that test again. So we're just trying to pass the next test, came one foot in front of the other, and, and do something good for the people that, that uh, rely on us, the employees, the community, the people we buy things from, uh, the people we sell things to. They're counting on us to, to do some some pretty wonderful things here, and, and we are. It's really fun. Getting into some of the specifics of the businesses or locations that your product go to, I'm a big hockey guy, so I'll ask about Four Seasons Center here when it comes to kind of the drying of the air. Again, that humidity level important in ice arenas, which, as I understand, is a significant uh, part of the business. Yeah, ice arenas are uh, one of the markets that we started in when we decided to focus on desiccants, and we have a, a very large market share there now. It's about 10% of our business. And uh, what happens in an ice arena, that cold sheet of ice, is the moisture wants to go to it. And it makes it thicker and slushy and, and uh, condensation and fog and all those kinds of things that skaters and TV cameras don't like. Uh, and so by applying our desiccants to it, we can uh, keep the ice rink dry enough that that, doesn't, that problem goes away. Uh, and so that's kind of similar to what we do is we find a moisture problem mm -hmm. and then we develop a solution for it across the, across the market and so uh, the ice arenas is a large one a very large growth market for it right now is the lithium battery manufacturing not only for electric vehicles but other uh, batteries that are going to be used in, in uh, golf carts or, or whatever they're being used for uh, so lithium uh, starts to corrode at 1% relative humidity and has uh, some other problems above 5% relative humidity. So uh, we have to hold that room uh, very, very dry in order for them to even make the battery. So some of the applications we have, they just, they, they can't even do what they do without our product. Uh, sometimes it's just a benefit, but sometimes they can't do what they're supposed to do. We dry out SpaceX before they launch it. Oh. So we take care of the penguin area at the zoo so you, don't, you can see through the glass. And uh, we dry out airbags full of explosives before they put them in your car. Uh, accelerants, they actually call them accelerants, not explosives. They don't like the word explosive. No. <laughs> some, some negative connotation maybe with that. When, when it comes to, okay, so when it came to finding the, uh, the, the markets or creating the product, uh, you know, wh wh which came first, the chicken or the egg, I guess, when, when it came to marketing and finding these customers that you have? Yeah, it's, it was really a very iterative process. You find one and find the other and find the one. and, and um, uh, so uh, I think again that entrepreneurial nature, that curious nature, uh, we can find uh, applications. And the question I think is, you know, is it a large enough application that we can actually provide a cost-effective solution? So that, that, that thinking has to be applied as you go through that process of finding markets and applying the products we have. A couple more minutes here about is what we have. Um, as far as Owatonna, what do you like about being a part of the Owatonna community, the, the, the industrial park area, which seems so strong and, and uh, getting stronger all the time? Uh, what about just being a part of this community? And you yourself an Owatonna High School graduate as well, strong mm -hmm. ties to the community. Yeah, Owatonna is home, uh, born and raised here on a dairy farm. And um, Owatonna, I think uh, its location is in a great place if you want to go to the metro area it's pretty close um, but it, uh, Oatana is very um, much a, a community uh, just uh, very um, engaged with how people in Oatana want to be a community and how they invest in the community 
uh, of their time, of their resources, of their finances, and anything from walking paths to uh, uh, clubs and organizations and all that sort of thing. So Oton is just a wonderful place to be, raise a family, raise a business, and uh, get associated with uh, the wonderful things that are here. And you guys are involved in helping to uh, promote and support uh, uh, community events, uh, um, uh, uh, charitable organizations and things of that sort, give back to the community in a pretty big way? Yeah, we are. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we started the business. There's several reasons why we started it, but one of them was, you know, how do we, how do we take the talents God has given us, use them to create wealth or create a benefit for all those that, that count on us. And, and the community has a lot of needs. Uh, everybody does. Well, uh, Tom, this has been fascinating. I've, I've learned a lot. It's incredible. The, the new building, you're still kind of moving in from other spots, but it's such a neat addition here. Uh, so I congratulate you again on that. And any other uh, closing thoughts or things you'd like to share? Uh, nope, just we're really, really happy to be here, and uh, thank you for uh, coming and uh, chatting with us here today, and uh, lots of good things coming for CDI and the whole city of Owatonna, so it's, uh, it's a lovely place to be at the right time. All right, I'm here with Tom Peterson.